People aren't paying enough attention. This is Healthcare Triage News. Let's start with allergies. We've covered them a number of times on Healthcare Triage, mostly to argue that the evidence seems to support early introduction of allergens rather than avoidance to prevent allergies. But those were individual trials. What's the evidence in total? There was a recent systematic review and meta-analysis on that subject. Researchers searched the literature from 1946 through 2016. They looked for studies that examined the timing of allergenic food introduction in infancy and how that related to the development of allergic or autoimmune disease. The main outcomes of interest included wheezing, eczema, allergic rhinitis, food allergy, allergic sensitization, type 1 diabetes mellitus, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune thyroid disease, and juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So you know everything. They reviewed more than 16,000 titles that they eventually whittled down to 146 studies. Let's review. There was moderate certainty evidence from five trials of more than 1,900 participants that early egg introduction at four to six months was associated with reduced egg allergy. The absolute risk reduction for a population with 5.4% incidence of egg allergy was 24 cases per 1,000 population. There was moderate certainty evidence from two trials of more than 1,500 participants that early peanut introduction at four to 11 months was associated with reduced peanut allergy. Absolute risk reduction for a population with 2.5% incidence of peanut allergy was 18 cases per 1,000 population. There was low to very low certainty evidence that early fish introduction was associated with reduced allergic sensitization and rhinitis. There was high certainty evidence that timing of gluten introduction was not associated with celiac disease risk and timing of allergenic food introduction was not associated with other outcomes. Delaying the introduction of foods or avoidance completely might be a very bad idea. Talk to your doctor. Also, I'm not one to say I told you so, but you know. And our second story was covered in the media, but not enough. The title of the paper was Effect of Wearable Technology Combined with a Lifestyle Intervention on Long-Term Weight Loss, the IDEA Randomized Clinical Trial. This was an RCT of 471 people, median age 31 years, median weight about 90 kilograms, that took place over two years. All of them were placed on a low calorie diet, told to exercise, and they all got group counseling. Six months later, they all got telephone counseling sessions, text messages, and access to online study materials. At that point, Half were also told to monitor their diet and physical activity on a website, and the other half got wearable tech. I can't tell you how many presentations I've been forced to sit through in the last few years that hail Fitbits or Nike Fuel Bands or even the Apple Watch as the cure to obesity. It doesn't matter that research shows us that exercise is not the key to weight loss. It doesn't matter that almost everyone I know who uses such a device is already active. So, so, so many people seem to think that wearable tech like Fitbits or fuel bands or Apple Watches are the answer. Anyway, the people in the intervention without the wearable tech lost on average 5.9 kilograms over two years. The people with the wearable tech lost 3.5 kilograms. Did you get that? People who use the wearable tech lost significantly less weight than the people who didn't. Now, I'm not one to say I told you so, but no, you know, screw that. I told you so. Healthcare Triage is supported in part by viewers like you through Patreon.com, a service that allows you to support the show through a monthly donation. We'd especially like to thank our research associate, Joe Sevitz, and our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Sam. More information can be found at Patreon.com slash Healthcare Triage.